Good day and welcome to Kerbal Space Program. I'm your host today, Marcus Reese, and we're going to be doing a little how-to on how to build a rocket and fly it to Mini Moon. Or Mini Moose, I should say. I always get that name wrong. But anyways, the purpose of this video will be to kind of go over some basic flight principles. So that's more as opposed to an actual how-to. It gives the idea of things to keep in mind when building your rockets, launching, planning your flight route, and in general, other advanced tactics as opposed to just barely getting the bare minimum. A lot of what you see will be probably overkill for what is needed, but it gives that ability to do a bit of extra, gives a bit of leeway in case there's errors. You can make it a bit tougher at times, but at the same time, it allows you to have a lot more finesse. Anyways, we'll just get started here. And all this has been done on the version 15.2 as well. There's no mods used on this version on this play I'm using, so anything you have here can be used with the version 15.2. If you, I'll be starting with the rocket build. If you'd rather just go to launch, I'll pr try to get a link in there for that so you can just skip right to it because a lot of the fun with this is building the rockets. But again, let's start with building the rockets then. Now, first thing you do when you start build getting your rocket build is you get a command module. There's a lot of different types, but for just going straight to a moon and back, these ones work nicely because you can build right in a nice symmetrical design. Helps keep the rockets stable when they're symmetrical. Won't get a lot of deviation, banking. In general, this one's a really nice one for getting started with. The basic principles of building, though, is you got to plan what you're going to be doing, and you got to build in reverse. So, of course, the last thing that ever happens in the launch is you land. So you have your little command module, select parachute, and that's pretty much where you want to land. So you can go to your structural, throw in a little coupler, and from there on you go to your next stage. Now what I'm going to be doing is I'll just be doing little cuts here to not waste time showing all the parts, so I'll just be giving little pauses like I'm going to do right now, and then I'll come back with the completed stage. All right, now of course right before landing you need to leave the moon and capture orbit. That's why I have two double fuel tanks. You probably get away with just one tank if you just didn't care about where you're landing, but for purpose of regaining an orbit, I'm going to use two here. So you'll notice I'm just using a little booster, but there's not much mass left here, so one is all you need. You're not going to have any atmosphere to overcome. Not really any gravity to fight with. And also the little one is gimbal too, so it allows some control. One thing that you'll notice, I'm using an SAS module. For those of you who don't know what this is, it's kind of like a gyroscope. Helps maintain stability. So if we switch over to the command and control, you see there's two types. There's an SAS and an advanced SAS. Now I'm not going to go into too much depth for it. They can do about similar things. The difference is the advanced SAS will actually keep a guidance. So if you come offline, it'll point you back where the SAS won't. And the reason I'm just using the SAS module, it, I'll show you in the flight video. Right now it's not too important, but when I get there, it'll become pretty clear. Alright, the next stage added here is my lander stage. You'll see it consists of three of the gimbaled rockets. These will work for actually landing on the moon as well as the mini moose. Now again, I could have gotten away with just one booster on mini moose because of low gravity, but this again will work for both moons. So some mini moose need a little bit more finesse control on the throttle. You can see I have lander legs added, the, thing, the gimbal rockets, as well as I've added structure. Now structure is one of the real things you got to pay attention to because if you have, start having wobbles in your rocket, it'll actually also wobble your thrust, which can lead to poor control or even complete loss of control. Another thing to always keep track of when you're building is your stages here, you know, your separations. You can see here I've actually put it so that way the, the landing boosters actually jettison when I engage the, or, the orbit the orbital lift stage. The reason for that is, is it prevents any sort of loss of control, loss of velocity when changing stages. It's a very important thing to keep track of. It helps prevent accidents and just in general a really smooth launches. You'll see me doing that a lot. Every time you add stage just double check to make sure all your engines are in the right spot because last thing you want is something going off when it's not supposed to be the wrong stage separating and then everything likes to explode. A fairly simple stage added here. So it just consists of a tank and a half as well as a large gimbaled rocket. This is simply to catch lunar orbit. When you get there, if you want to control your landing, it's very important. You can get by without it if you don't care where you're landing, but if you want that nice specific landing point, you really need to be able to capture orbit. Stage is pretty important. Aside from that, not much to it. You can see again, I've matched my stage coupler, so if this thing runs out of fuel, I can quickly switch to my other ones without any accidental loss of control. Okay, a little bit busy here. Uh, first thing you'll probably notice is I've actually added an SAS into that previous stage. I forgot to add the advanced SAS. At this point, you're going to be putting a lot, a lot of thrust. It'll have a tendency you might want to veer. This will really help you control, make sure you stay on your heading paths. 
you don't want to slightly drift off. So you have that SES here, because by the time we get to this stage, we won't be wanting it. That's I'm jettisoning it when I'm doing my landing. Um, I've also added, you can see here, my RCS. This will help the mass rotate, good thrusters. Yeah, with as well as the side tanks. This will help me deorbit Kerbin and get into my flight path of the moons. And I've also added actually a fuel line here. Now, a fuel line flows from these tanks to here. That means when this engine's burning, it'll actually draw from these sets of tanks. It'll help keep me preserving this fuel tank. So when these engines shut off, I can just jettison these off. I won't even notice there's a thrust difference. You can see I've combined these engines into the same stage. So that way when I ignite this stage, they'll all go off together. And in the little area here, I need to connect these up. And next, onto the deorbit, or onto the actual getting the orbit off the planet. I'm going to add some stages there. And all right, here we have a final orbital capture stage. This will actually be burning for a lot of the flight here. But the main purpose of this one, again, is as I'm trying to capture orbit, you need a bit of thrust to get a nice stable orbit, control the orbit, any correct you need to do. As well as I'm using the gimbaled ones here. They produce less thrust, but again, it'll help your rocket steer when you're applying the thrust. It'll give you a bit of turning to it. Pretty important to use these ones. A lot of loss of control is just the fact you have no way of actually steering your rocket once you start leaving the atmosphere. So you want to have a good guidance stage. In this case, I'm using them as two part as for guidance and also just for getting to orbit. Okay, here we have some main thrust boosters. Currently, I'm just kind of estimating I'll need three. You might, I might need to change this after, but for now, I'll start with this. It'll just help get me right off the planet. Good straight up launch. A lot of thrust. Pretty straightforward. Pretty much the only time you'll ever use these is when you're actually leaving a planet. So, might need to use them later if we start getting other planets. But for now, the only time you ever need to set to start. And lastly, there's just one last stage I'll need to add. And that'll be kind of the auxiliary boosters. Help get that first initial push to the atmosphere. Get off the first bit of gravity. So, I'll be adding those. And also, again, you'll see here. I have the, all the engines signing to light together. And I'll have these stage jettisons by themselves. And you'll see me, when I get these boosters on, I'll have actually the same kind of thing going on. All right, I got my testing done. Now, testing is very important. You really need only need to get your ship up into orbit altitude, at which point, once with a little bit of experience, you can tell how much kind of fuel you have left. We're not used too much. There's pretty much everything on the bottom half here. Getting to orbit is the important part. If you can get, it doesn't matter if you have a little bit of extra fuel left when you jettison these. That just means you have to use less later on. So it's always good to plan. I don't want to be using these stages too much before I'm ready to leave orbit. So focus as much I can down here. The most part of it, um, it was just needing just a little bit more velocity to help get that initial acceleration so I'm up at the altitudes quicker. So I've actually added solid stage boosters. I love these things. They're quite fun and handy. They're lightweight for the thrust they put out. Now I was actually able to originally test with just the three. I didn't, and uh, I decided though, it never hurts to have a little bit extra, so extra fuel because I was kind of cutting it close with the fuel I had left when I got to orbit. So. I've added these ones that fire in sequence, so the outside ones, and then they'll work inwards. You can see that when each set of decouplers goes off, the next set ignites. Nice smooth transitions, nice high speed launch, and all in all, fairly quite effective. I've never used this design before. I've always gone with a four, set of fours, but this time I thought this might look cool, so that's the reason I did it this way, actually, it was just to look cool. And that's pretty much the fun of the game, is getting all that light out, you know, just... How do you want to do it? You know, it's a customizable game. There's more coming. Again, it's pretty much almost a pre-alpha. So, oh, if you, well, so it's just fun. You kind of make your own missions, do whatever you kind of want to do. And aside from that, like I said, the test went well. Again, keeping track of all your structures, make sure everything's nicely tied together. Don't want any wobbles. I did have a slight wobble with this stage here, though it was kind of walking, wobbling. So I'm actually going to add a little bit more structural connection to this. Add this bottom stage up to here. Because again, wobble is a killer of rockets. It'll you'll just get a death wobble, and they'll start throwing off your control, and it, it can become unmanageable or even completely fly apart. So, I'll have that extra little bit of structure in, and then it should be good to go. And that should help keep it from wobbling around. And of course, lastly, always want to save it. Don't save it, and only you're bound to lose it, and that's never nice. So, a good name. That should do it, and it's saved, and that's about it. I'll be going through more detail and stuff as I'm launching off, so I'll see you on the launch pad. Have a good one.